Well, you know, we've been talking about the post-resurrection appearances of Jesus. And sitting outside, a charcoal fire, and we're doing some work around the house, and uh, we just got finished with that. And I'm sitting here and needed to get a video out. I'm sorry that it's so late, but we're tied up with some other things. And uh, we're looking tonight at the Emmaus Road experience has come to an end, and the couple, Mary and Cleopas, made their way back to uh, Jerusalem, found the, uh, the 11 and the rest of the believers that were there, and they came in to tell them their good news that Jesus was alive, and they're confronted with the fact that others have seen Jesus. Simon Peter did. And uh, as they're having this discussion and sharing what they had seen and what it could possibly mean, as they're behind locked doors, suddenly in their midst, Jesus himself appears. And let me tell you, that caused some little disturbance in that group of folks. Number one, they were already afraid of what the Jewish leaders would do, uh, whether they would send the temple police to round up the believers of Jesus, whether Rome would get involved and the uh, Roman cohort would come in there and take people out. Uh, you know, so there is this question, what's going to happen to us, and should we leave? And you know, Mary and Cleopas, that was their mind. Let's get out of town before all this stuff blows up in our face. Well, as they're, they're terrified of what the officials are going to do, they have this weird news. Simon Peter comes and tells them that he's seen Jesus, the resurrected Christ. And then Mary and Cleopas burst in, hey, we've seen Jesus. No kidding, Simon saw Jesus. In their midst, Jesus appears. Now, I want to read to you what, what this says uh, concerning that. While they were stating these things, uh, he himself stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be to you, shalom, which is the Jewish greeting, wishing you uh, fullness, completeness. But they were uh, startled and frightened and thought they were seeing a spirit. And he said to them, now, they were startled, that means to be shocked, and they were afraid, terrified. And then Jesus says to them, why are you troubled, which is the same phrase that Jesus uses in John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. It means to be shaken up. So they're shaken to their core. Why are you troubled about all this that's taking place? And certainly, why are you troubled? Why are you shaken up about seeing me? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Now, the word for doubts there is not our typical word for doubt. It is a word, dialogismus, which means a, a reasoning in a positive sense. In a negative sense, it means to argue with yourself. Um, there is this negative sense of arguing against what you're actually seeing or what's being presented to you. And so in their minds, I'm sure that there's a dead silence. And in their minds, they're questioning, how could this be possible? How could he be here? Is he a spirit? Is he a ghost? Is he something else? Now, did the Jewish people believe in resurrection? Yes, they did, for the most part. But they didn't believe in a resurrection happening before the end time. They believed that uh, people, there would be a general resurrection, and then the kingdom is restored. Not one person is going to be resurrected in the middle of it. And so this is a questioning thing as well. And so as they're debating this in their own minds and wondering what in the world is going on, he says, see my hands and my feet, that it is myself. Touch me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. So he's physically present. He's not a spirit. He says, look, I'm not a spirit. I am physically with you. I have flesh and bones. And he illustrates that it is the same body. Look at the nail prints. Look at my side. You can see that it's me. And um, I think that's marvelous And he, that he comes to them and seeks to, one, he blesses them with peace. He wants them to be at peace. No lack, no disturbance. He realizes their hearts are troubled and that they are questioning how could this all be possible is he really here is this a spiritual appearance is this 
a, a physical manifestation? How did he come through a locked door? How did he suddenly appear in our presence? Those are questions that we'll look at as we look at the glorified body that Jesus has because we're going to have one too. And I'm excited about that. That is exciting uh, to think about that glorified body. So I look forward to that. And then we're going to continue the rest of this week looking at this appearance. The title of this Sunday sermon is Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? Uh, and it, as the movie illustrated, that movie Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, it was a shocking appearance. This is a shocking appearance as well. And there's a dinner that takes place in that Jesus eats and they eat, and it's a, it's a wonderful experience. It's a wonderful thing that takes place. And so what we have demonstrated for us is several things, but in this one, it is that this resurrected glorified body is different from this body that we inhabit right now. Um, that body is going to be able to experience both dimensions, heaven and earth, coming together. And you know, the exciting thing about that is, in Revelation, at the end of Revelation, we get that whole picture of the of heaven and earth coming together, fusing together, those dimensions coming together as they were in the first creation, and they will be again in the second creation. And we'll move backwards and forwards through those uh, with ease, and we'll be able to move as Jesus moved from place to place through this. I mean, we will be inhabiting both dimensions at once. How exciting is that to think about? You know, in the midst of this still, we're coming out of the quarantine, I think, coming out of all of that. I'm excited about that. But, you know, even if that is going to go on forever, if that were our life forever, it would not dull my excitement one bit because we've got a new creation to live out and a fullness to expect. And I'm looking so forward to, to the new heaven and the new earth coming together like that and getting to experience that for eternity. While we're on talking about coming to the end of quarantine, the governor spoke about churches today. And we had a staff meeting regarding that today. And we have decided that we are going to begin services on Mother's Day. And we will not have Sunday school that for two Sundays, which would be uh, Mother's Day and the following Sunday. We will just have, when we will have two services. Uh, right now we're looking at 9.30 to 10.30. We have 30 minutes to disinfect and so forth as the governor has asked us to do. And then we'll have another service at 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock. And I know some people say, oh, I don't, I don't want to go to that one. I don't want to go to that one. Well, right now we're looking at if your name ends with A to L, you come to the first service. M to Z, you come to the second service. I know it's Mother's Day. If your mother falls in a different group, go to that one. We're not really as strict as you might think we're being on it. But we have to try to set limits on how many people can be there. We can't just have one service. So please help us out. We're going to be getting more information out to you about that as we work on it. We're not ready for Sunday school yet. Um, we're not ready for nursery yet. We will have an overflow in the fellowship hall where you can watch the service on our YouTube channel on our projected screen there in the fellowship hall. If you have little ones and you need to go there and that kind of thing, um, we'll make that information available as we go through it. Uh, so I'm excited that we're going to be doing that. Uh, that will begin on Mother's Day. Right now we're looking at 9.30 to 10.30, 30 minute break, 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Um, I'm excited about it. I hope you are too. Help us embrace this. Uh, there'll be a lot of new things that we have to embrace and a lot of changes. Um, but I think we're up to it. I think we're ready for that. Um, there will be some changes in how things are done from now on. Uh, and so I'm excited about it and I've embraced it. This newness and the, the possibilities that are out there for us. Hope you will too. Um, also for Mother's Day. If you have a picture of your mom that you want to have on the screen, we're not going to be doing the gifts that we've been asked not to hand out gifts. We're not going to be doing bulletins because we've been asked not to hand out things. Uh, the offering will be taken up in box in the lobby. We will have disinfectant and stuff out for you. Um, so things will be a little bit different. Uh, but if you have a picture of your mom you want on the screen, if you would email that to Cindy uh, at uh, Cindy at TroyFirstBaptist.org. Um, she will get that and put that together for us. So you need to get those in as soon as you can. We'll do the best we can. Hey, it's a labor of love. We're working through it. And I know you'll help us through this as well.
Listen, I'm so excited that on Mother's Day we get to come back together. It's two services, that's true, but we're still gathering the saints together. Uh, I'm excited about that. We're still going to be doing live stream. That'll still be going on as well. If you're not comfortable coming back then, we're still going to be live stream on our YouTube channel. Hopefully we'll have our new equipment installed by Mother's Day, and it'll be a better uh, program for us. I'm excited about all of that. Hope you are too. Hey, listen, I love you. More importantly, God loves you and gave his son, Jesus Christ. You might have eternal life, forgiveness of sin, and joy indescribable right here and right now. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on our devotion.